Hey there, everybody. Destin Legarry here. This is Paul Tassi. Paul has Hi. Got... Yeah. Good. How are you doing? Let's talk about this PlayStation thing to the death. As the internet has almost talked it to death today, but we are just getting started. So, Paul, anything interesting happened today? Anything? Sony has a press conference coming up. That's cool. I'll give them that. Yeah. Like, very excited about that. And then shortly after that, there was another little story that surprise, surprise, didn't go unnoticed. Why don't you tell people what's going on? Uh, this just in, Dustin. Sony has done something confusing with <laughs> upgrades. No. Really? Uh, okay. So this has been kind of a controversy for a while with Sony where, you know, we could talk about how it's different than Xbox and smart delivery and day one on Game Pass and stuff. But Sony at least had a kind of coherent system down of... You buy a game on PS4, 60 bucks. Buy a game on PS5, 70 bucks. They increase the price. Uh, a lot of games, you could kind of just upgrade your version for uh, $10 to kind of boost it up. Or sometimes you get a little complicated, like Miles Morales, I think it was maybe $20 more overall, something like that, uh, to, to switch over. But fundamentally, that was kind of how it worked. Um, today, Horizon Forbidden West announced that... There is effectively no way to buy that upcoming game and then upgrade it to the PS5 version. There are still $60 and $70 versions for PS4 and PS5, but there is no $10 upgrade. There is no $20 upgrade. You, from the start, you have to buy uh, at minimum an $80 super deluxe edition of the game, which comes with both the PS4 and PS5 version. So, for instance, if you have a PS4 and you don't know when you're going to get your hands on a PS5, you just have to kind of assume you will get one and then somehow pay $10 more for the game than you would have if you just bought it on PS5 in the first place. <laughs> uh, so this is a very confusing and convoluted path that the whole Internet was like trying to figure out today, like whether this was like a mistake or or if they were doing the math wrong or something, but everything points to the fact that this is exactly as ludicrous as it sounds. Yeah. You know what? My initial reaction was, this is a mistake. They're going to fix it. Then nothing all day long. Here's what it says on the official PlayStation blog right now for players looking to have access to both the PS4 and PS5 versions of horizon forbidden West. Please purchase the digital deluxe collectors or regala editions Dual entitlement does not apply <laughs> to the standards and standard and special edition. So even if you get the $70 special edition on PlayStation 4, it does not include the PlayStation 5 upgrade. And let me just say this. Thank you, PlayStation gamers, for calling this out. This is ridiculous. I, I was super glad to see like universally, well, almost universally, because of course the defense force is in full effect right now, but almost universally, this is being called out as a bad, confusing practice. This it's like not in full effect though. Cause like even, even like the usual suspects are not all lining up behind this because it is like that indefensible. Like mm -hmm. this is a, kind of a, a watershed moment in a lot of ways for this whole it's controversy. It, it's just like all the little things have been piling up. And for so long, I've been just saying this isn't good for the gamer. Like this isn't good for the, the, the person making the purchases, the consumer. It's really not good for the consumer. Right. And now they don't even have a $10 upgrade path. They're just saying straight up, either buy it twice, buy the, <laughs> Their, their cheapest advice is buy the $80 version on PlayStation 4 so you can have the PS5 upgrade. But the Regala edition they recommend is like $260, right? It's just, it needs to be fixed. It needs to be addressed by Sony. And compounding it, Paul, compounding it, you know what I'm yeah. going to, right? They promised that this would be a free upgrade. Yeah, so this is something we had to look up before the show because we kind of saw this quote being passed around. Uh, and it literally says on a PlayStation blog post from a year ago that Horizon Forbidden West, I think with like Sackboy and, and Spider-Man or something, yep. would be a, a free upgrade from PS4 to PS5. I can read uh, you the quote. The PS4 yeah. digital versions of launch games include a free upgrade on both PS5 consoles, while the PS4 disc versions of these games include a free upgrade on the PS5 with Ultra HD Blu-ray disc drive. That is from the PlayStation blog. 
where they're talking about Spider-Man Miles Morales, Sackboy A Big Adventure, and Horizon Forbidden West. But th there's no other way to read that, right? I mean, I, I had someone say that, like, since it got delayed, it's no longer like a launch window game <laughs> because it's outside year one of the console's launch, which is like, if that's the metric for, like, going back on their word, like, that is ludicrous. Like, I don't... I, I don't know why that would be an actual justification for doing this, but like you can bet people are going to throw this back in their faces. And they, they offered no explanation as to why it changed or that it was changing. Uh, and people had to dig up this quote. So I, I, I just don't really understand why they're doing this. Yeah, this is just through and through. Not a good look. Sony needs to address this and then they need to make corrections here. Now, my experience today has been absolutely bizarre. <laughs> uh, basically, what I what I tried to say is you need to keep calling Sony out on this stuff. This is strange. This is something they need to fix. And it has been so loud today. I'm very, very happy about that. I have to imagine that maybe even by the time this airs, I'm going to air this the next day after the news at 7 a.m. Maybe after the time after the time this airs, we are going to hear from Sony about their response to this. They have their they have their show next Thursday. They promise that it will be free. Do the right thing and just hold up to your promise. That's it. That's what the community wants, you know? Yeah. Uh, if I trusted them to do that, I don't know if we'd be in the situation in the first place. Because, like, we just, they just keep making this kind of, like, baffling series of, of decisions when it comes to everything in this realm. Like, I just, I don't get it. And, well, like, bigger picture stuff, I think you could make arguments for. Like, okay, you know, no, we can't really demand they put all their games on, like, PS now day one. Like I get how that's like, you know, is that the right business call for us? Like we're a different company than Microsoft, blah, blah, blah. But like, this is like, you are really nickel and diming now when you were just straight up not offering an upgrade path for a game. And like, this almost makes me think there could be like a technical reason for this somehow. Like, I just, I don't understand why this would be different for this game when they, for at least a couple other games, they've, they've, done this kind of more straightforward upgrade path already but like sony is is one of the few companies doing this like other some other big companies are trying to get away with this like i think call of duty or something had a ten dollar upgrade to next gen or something but mo most companies are just being like ah, i don't know screw it like if you have that on one system you have it on both systems like no big yeah. deal like even cdpr is doing that with cyberpunk allegedly mm -hmm. um whenever so that like, comes i just up. i yeah, right, 2023 <laughs> uh i so i i don't know why like sony is is a staking its claim here in the first place, and then B making this so so convoluted for this like their most anticipated PS5 game specifically. And it's like, are they that desperate for like extra revenue for them this one game where they need to set it up this way? Like that just they shouldn't be. I imagine it's going to be a massive hit. PS5 is mm -hmm. a massive hit. Like why are they doing this? Yeah. So like just thinking about it, Sony has the fastest selling console in history, I believe. Right, Paul. Uh, yeah. they, they've posted record breaking sales of their console. They're, they're posting massive revenue gains. And, um, part of that is they're charging 10 extra dollars for games. And then to see people even, even discuss the idea that I'm totally happy to pay more. I'm like, you want to pay the hundred billion dollar company more, more money. Like, like that's, that's what I, I just don't understand it to be honest. Like, um, especially in this case, like it's already something I, I don't understand the defense of. I think a lot of people feel like they're sporting developers and the 10 extra dollar thing I actually came to an understanding on. They just feel like they know they're going to get a quality game. So they feel confident in spending $70. I get that. Right. But this yeah. is bizarre. This just doesn't make any sense. This is bad marketing, not only with the terminology of like dual entitlement, which is weird, but also just not having a clear upgrade path. And you talked about their confusing practices. Ghosts of Tsushima Director's Cut was the first company that I've seen actually tackle the save transfer issue. Uh, now, I know you had problems with it, but was that widespread or was that just you? I don't know. I still don't know what happened there. Okay. Well, but I, 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 I'm not going to generalize my experience. I will just say this is the second time I have had save transfer issues where I was able to save my Avengers save, but my Tsushima save is dead. Yeah, they all have these. They have all these little system things that need to be corrected. And I, I, I honestly think they're all fixable, right? 
uh, right now you have to go to a game on your PlayStation 5 and decide, do I want the PS4 version or the PS5 version? I'm on my PS5. I want the PS5 version. Why would you ever want to install the inferior version? You have, you have multiple your... games installed. You have different updates. Like I had both yeah. versions of Destiny installed for a while and they would both patch every time. And I'm like, wait, why do I still have the old one on here? Like it, it is much more convoluted. And I, I said this on Twitter earlier, but like, I made fun of smart delivery when it first was announced. I was like, why would, why does this need a name? Like, why is this a thing? Like, of course, you know, saves will transfer and upgrades will be free. Like why, why is, why does this need packaging? And why is Microsoft, be. why is Microsoft making this a selling point? And like now in hindsight, it's like, oh, <laughs> this is why it, it's <laughs> because not, you can badly screw this up if you don't do it right. Yeah. It's not, it's not until you see it implemented poorly that you can ex, mm-hmm. ex- uh, what's the word appreciate what yeah. smart delivery actually offers, which is, it's just an easy you, you, here there. I can play my next med version of every Xbox game there. I will always play the best version on my series X, you know, this, I, like, I, I keep, I keep thinking of the Sony video where they were making fun of Xbox. They're like, this is how you share games on PlayStation. He yeah. hands them the bit. It, it, you, you literally just look at the new generation of that just now. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> This used to be their thing. They were like, we love simplicity. The exact opposite thing was happening last generation where Microsoft was like, oh, like, do you have your disk rights properly set up between like game sharing yeah. with your friends and like the license will install itself on your console and like do an online check in to bear. It's like, what are you doing? Like, just don't do any of that. And they, eventually they didn't. They killed it. But yeah, it's it's a very similar situation. Only Sony isn't really being hurt by it just because of how absurd the ps5 has done sales wise so it remains to be seen like what impact this will have because they're not really suffering consequences and like yeah we're all making fun of them on twitter but it's gonna sell you know great right so like how much of that translates to action so like this this one does seem big enough to me that it probably i mean it should but it may actually warrant change and they may change their minds on this one Although if they go back to the, oh, just kidding, it's it's a free upgrade, then you're going to be like, well, why can't they all be free upgrades? Why are yeah. we doing this at all? So I wonder if then they propose like, oh, maybe it should be a $10, you know, just upgrade fee, but then they're still going back on their words. So but, they've put themselves in a very awkward position here. The whole the whole thing is very strange. So for a game like Ghost, they, they updated Ghost of Tsushima, right? That's great. They updated 60. It's free. It's the PS4 version of the game, but it just it runs better on your PS5, right? Uh, and they did that for a handful of titles, but they just don't have the workflow set up, apparently, for games to do that easily. Meanwhile, on Xbox, it seems very easy because there's a, a, a very large library of games that have been enhanced on the Series X or improved on the Series X and S uh, brand consoles. This is something I would love to see PlayStation tackle and fix. Um, I'm glad that they updated God of War for free, and I'm glad they updated Ghost for free. The The confusing thing is like, but also we're going to sell you a director's cut version of, of the game. Ghost, you can argue that Icky Island is worth the value, and it is. It absolutely is worth the additional cost. Even if you pay the $30 fee or the $20 fee, uh, I would say Ghost, just being such a spectacular game, is worth it. Um, it's just so weird. It's weird, like, okay, you can play enhanced versions of the game, but we also want to sell them to you again with new stuff. And it's and compounding that is the the this confusing situation with Horizon, which to me sort of says, you gotta get stuff in order over there. You like if it's ten dollars, it's ten dollars. Do that, you know? Yeah. And and if it's free, don't <laughs> make sure it's free. Don't tell people that it's not after the fact. That's sort of my t- two cents on the whole thing. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, my, mine's exactly the same. I mean, we, we can argue about the $70 price point and stuff, but like that's clearly not going away. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to make, you know, these kind of rules where next gen costs something and you have to upgrade to it, allow people to upgrade to it. Don't make them pre-upgrade for $20 more than they pay otherwise and for $10 more than the game even costs on the system because you bundle in all this other deluxe crap. Like... This specific instance is a much worse version of an already kind of not great system they've been doing already. But like this, this one makes the least amount of sense. Like even just at a mathematical level, it doesn't make sense. Like so much so that I, I reread this FAQ and all these listings like 
15 times today to make sure I was understanding this correctly because it was, it was just that odd. Yeah. Um, I don't want this to come off like fear mongering or anything. This is a genuine question I have for you. Do you think they want the upgrade cost to be $20 instead of $10? Oh, um, because in this instance, the lowest fee that where you could have the PS4 version and the PS5 version is a $20 cost up until now it's been a $10 cost to upgrade via the director's cut or whatever. And there's usually the thing, it's, past it's, it's the not even a $20 upgrade because it's impossible, but it is $20 more, but like they, they couldn't really do that without raising the price point of games again from 70 to 80. Cause like last gen staying the same. So like, I, you know, it's, it's controversial enough that they did 70 and I think that already does hurt some games like, mm -hmm. yeah, not God of war and, and horizon, but it could have hurt Returnal somewhat. Re Re Returnal hurt, posted you know. like, what was it? 600,000 in sales? Probably, we'll say they're at 600,000 yeah. for sales. Miles Morales, meanwhile, which had, it was released on multiple SKUs and it, it had uh, options for upgrading that, well, you you know more about, it was it launched was the, at was a the lowest normal price, price one, like 50 bucks or something? I, yeah. I think it was like, if you just bought Miles Morales on PS5, I think it was like $50. It I didn't think. launch at $70 and it is by right. far, yeah. I know it's Spider-Man, so it kind of skews the data, but it's by far their most popular game that they have released on the PlayStation 5. And I have to, I almost have to ask, is the $70 thing doing more harm than benefit to Sony? You know, because that's, like that's a calculation. I just I don't know if anyone can make yet because mm -hmm. we I mean, and they kind of just ch pick and choose what to share and they're not going to show us the bad cases. Like I, I certainly can make the argument that that probably would have hurt a game like Returnal or Godfall, which launched at $70. Yeah. We all forget like, but it might benefit them more for games that they know will sell a ton uh, like God of War Horizon, uh, whatever the new Naughty Dog game will be, stuff like that. So that benefit, that extra ten dollars times ten million, doesn't matter up against yeah. Returnals like two million or what you know what I mean. So I I can see why they are thinking about this because they know their games are their best asset. They know they don't have a subscription service that is as attractive and and you know retention holding as they're as working Xbox on stuff. Game. They're working on I'm stuff. Sure, they, I'm sure they're working on stuff, but they, in, but they like are one, not going to launch anything yeah. that is the same thing like that has all yeah. the features that lists all the games. I'm sure they will upgrade PS now. I mean, they have yeah. to, but well, they invested know, like 1.5 billion into their net, their like services. Right. So I do right. think, I do think eventually we are going to get their answer to game pass as they promised. Uh, I don't think it will be the same as game pass. It's definitely going to be different. And, uh, I think when PlayStation gamers get it, anybody who has been anti game pass, they're going to suddenly be like, well, this is great. You know? Oh, the value. Yeah. Yeah. Because but that's the thing. It's like good fundamentally, value. But fundamentally, you know, the I mean, the way Sony's treating its games now, like, it is impossible for me to see them going from, you know, a price increase, $60 to $70 for this generation to suddenly, eh, just kidding, like, all these games are launching day one on PS Now. Like, that's not going to happen. That won't happen. And that is I would, definitely yeah. one of the most attractive things about Game Pass. Mm -hmm. So without that, what is PS Now? Like, what are the upgrades that are going to draw people and get PS Now subscriptions up to the level they want them to be. I, I, that's a genuine question. I don't know. So, I, well, they do, they do really cool stuff with PlayStation plus. Uh, I like that they have the collections and that there's yeah. like, Hey, play mm -hmm. all these amazing games. Right. And I'm like, Oh, okay. That's, that's like no, no, if, ends and about it. That's great. That's great for their, yeah. their players and awesome. You know, Xbox has, uh, games with gold, right. Um, and <laughs> they actually have a good one. They have zone of the enders, you know, uh, for the first time in a while, but it's, it's not nearly as good as like having just access to a large library of games. Xbox mm -hmm. also has the funds to do something like Game Pass and take it at a loss. I think Sony is going to come up with something interesting there. Uh, and actually, maybe this is a good jumping off point to some more positive news. Sony fixed Horizon Forbidden West. It's a disaster. You know, it's a PR disaster today. Like it's clearly negatively and received. They're going to do a report and be like, hey, nobody liked that. <laughs> And what you're about to say should have been the news story today. Yep. Like this should have been the big announcement and it was an hour and then this other story took over. Yeah. So the, the big news today that was supposed to be the big news of the day was there's a PlayStation event coming. And I'm really stoked about Uh PlayStation showcase. It's next week, Thursday, September 9th at 1 PM Pacific time. And honestly, they have been so quiet for so long. All we've been hearing about is this weird $10 upgrade thing. 
today with the Horizon Forbidden West thing, uh, the the indie devs coming out when they tried to pull support for PSN and everything. I think they did have a, a show after that, but like there's all these negative little things and they've just been quiet for like two, three months, you know? So now yeah. finally, here they are. Sony is coming out and actually talking about some stuff. September 9th, 2021. I think they show God of War. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I think it's time. I mean, remember when we were pretending God of War came out in 2021? So like, that has to be for them to even have said that in the first place. It has to be decently far along. Yeah, uh, I'm still skeptical that it'll, it'll even come out 2022, and that it, they'll announce a 2022 holiday date. Then it could get pushed to February or whatever, like always happens. So I'm not going to rule that out. And yet, I agree with you that yeah, it is time to show something from God of War, at least like conceptually, like you know anything past the title. <laughs> like yeah, I, I think we're we're due for more than just like a title card tease. We need something maybe not gameplay maybe it'll just be like a, a cinematic teaser of whatever but i i certainly think it's time for that uh and then i, I certainly expect horizon to be there to some extent maybe we're not going to get another 20 minute thing but maybe they show mm -hmm. off some aspect of the game we haven't seen before uh i said online just no more no more death loop footage i've, I've yeah. seen enough death loop everything is death loop footage so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm i i get that game i'm, I'm good but <laughs> past that yeah what what else do you think could be there well, here, here's a get a sneak peek at the future of PlayStation 5 with updates from PlayStation Studios and industry leading devs. Hope to see you there. And I'll click into the actual thing here and just see if they said anything else. So here, here's the full thing from Sid Schumann. You've been awfully patient. Yes, we have, Sid. And we thank you for that. And now we're looking forward to showing you what we've been working on. Tune in next Thursday, September 9th at 1 p.m. Pacific time, all the times, uh, for a look into future of the future of PlayStation 5. The showcase will weigh in at 40 minutes long and include updates from PlayStation Studios and some of the industry's most imaginative developers for games releasing this holiday and beyond. And stick around after the presentation to get some more updates from some of the studio teams featured in the showcase. One thing to note, PlayStation's next generation of VR won't make an appearance this time, but there will still be plenty of great PS5 games from developers large and small. We hope you can join us. And then they link to their YouTube post and their their Twitch posting. So for me, honestly, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about right now, the the strange UI issues that people have been made fun of, like think uh, the not knowing if you're launching the PS4 or the PS5 version of the game, the save system. I want to hear them talk about that stuff. I want to hear them we're talk. Not going to. Well, I mean... It's my imaginary hopeful okay, wish, okay. wish thing. I would love it if they came out and they just said, hey, we're updating the UI as requested by fans. Because there, there's a beta version right now where they are making positive changes to their UI that people have requested, right? So they could address that and address what they're working on there. It would literally take two sentences to make fans happy or people who haven't had a good time with that. And just so you all know, we're working on the save system and we're working on some of the, the file structures of how the PlayStation 5 delivers your games. 20 bucks, they don't do it. But. They won't. It'll be the state of play thing. They'll do a thing. They'll do a transition. They'll do a thing. They'll do a transition with that narrator lady. That's, mm -hmm. That would be my bet. I bet okay. they close with God of War. I agree it's going to be God of War. I, I think they I, show it. Yeah, I, I think... The bare minimum I would expect is like footage from a bunch of stuff we know and like Kina and, you know, whatever else is coming out. Uh, maybe some third party slip in there. I don't know. And then some Horizon. And then worst case for me would just be like God of War title teaser and nothing. Best case would be God of War gets a chunky feature and then we get a, a tiny title teaser or something for maybe like the next Naughty Dog multiplayer thing they're doing. The factions or whatever they're working on. Yeah. That I, might be a reach, and yet I think that would be something they could probably use to get fans excited. I mean, because we already at least know about God of War's existence, but, you know, Naughty Dog's thing is kind of shrouded in mystery. And there's a couple other, you know, sequels and stuff that we know are, are in development that we could hear about. But um, I would be a little surprised if they did that, and I, I think you're right. I think it would be God of War, and if there was no God of War, I think that would be considered a disappointment. Yeah. Well, you know, TGS is coming up at the end of September also. It's this event is September 9th. They have to say something. 
They can't just keep missing and not participating in everything because is, is, will right, Sony right. be mad at TGS for debuting the uh, Xbox Series X there? Do they think they're biased? Oh no, <laughs> it, well, it wouldn't be like Sony to hold a grudge. So I no, know. I. Anyway, like I, I think that they're going to show God of War. I think at most we get like nine minutes of God of War. I think that would be the most time nine get. minutes. Yeah, like if they're doing a wow. segment. I think yeah. they give it a large segment, but they've been very clear that there are going to be multiple presentations here. I right. do think that this is also partially because the whole story that I'm seeing right now is like Sony has nothing for the holiday. They have nothing for Q4, right? They need right. to address that not only for gamers, but also for their investors. Because in, yes, Sony's doing great and everything, but it's always like, what's next? What's your plan for the future? And this gives them an opportunity to talk about all the third parties that are still hitting their console, how they have a stable slate of games for their their consumers, right? Yes, Xbox I could see has. A big, I could see a big numbers thing where they just yeah. blast out a bunch of like, here's how much the PlayStation is sold. Like they they've done that here and there, but I could see mm -hmm. them making a big fuss about it because I mean they they don't have anything for this fall. Like it's not like they're going to surprise announce a game for like November out of nowhere. Yeah. Like there is nothing outside of what they've already talked about. So they can't really do anything to you know calm investors or whatever but not that investors should even be freaked out anyway because you know no, they're that's... i don't i don't think they are but they just have to come right. out and say like look at all the great 30 third parties that we have however they talk about the future of playstation i think they sort of touch on what's going to be shown this holiday and if it is like a state of play remember it's going to be trailer transition trailer transition trailer transition unless it's like the state of play where they just played uh horizon for 22 minutes straight you know, and show is that, that technically a state of play or was that just like a gameplay I thing? I, I didn't think, think that it was, like was a... called the state of play. I okay. can't remember. I would have horizon to state of play. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I, I could look really quick. You can hear it playing on my speakers there. Okay. But yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I, what's it, what's it labeled as <laughs> gameplay trailer, gorilla talks, announcement trailer, state of play gameplay yep it was it was oh, a state it of play okay. it's 19 minutes and 11 seconds anything over 15 minutes is a state of play yeah yeah so who knows maybe they're messing with the format a little bit but i i, I think this will be a significant one and i think we get a lot of look at titles coming out in 2022 2022 mm -hmm. for both of these uh console manufacturers it's going to be awesome uh i think 2022 just for gaming period is going to be one of the strongest years in gaming history i whoa well, no, I really do. Like, look at, look at all, like, we got Starfield. We're probably getting Horizon in 2022, Forbidden West. We're probably getting God of War. I would bet we get God of War in 2022. Um, and there's a bunch of stuff that we still don't really know about. The, the Destiny new Zelda. 2, The Witch Queen. Yep. Yeah, Destiny 2, The Witch Queen. It's going to be a really strong year. Maybe yeah. not the best. Okay, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm being a little bit too, too hype about it. I do think it'll be a very strong year for gaming. What will Sony show? I want them to show a bunch of nerdy in the weed stuff. That's not their style. They're going to show gameplay. They're going to talk to Media Molecule. They're going to talk about what's going on with Astro's Playroom or whatever, you know, and uh, kind of be all over the place because they're talking to their in-house developers. I would love to hear from Housemark, you know, mm -hmm. Are, like what's going on with Returnal? Are they doing anything more there? It's like one of it's still still one of my game of the years. The only There's, two are, that are I, they doing, they're doing some new project that's like big or something, but I, I'd be surprised if that it was anything to talk about yet. There's rumors of a new studio. They could be announcing something with Kojima. The Death Stranding 2 rumors are out there, you know, so uh, there's also the Last of Us remaster rumor that's out there. There's so much that we've I don't heard want to about. know what the Last of Us pricing model is. Gonna, is oh, God. Be for, for that, but, but I guess I, that's technically not an upgrade. That's like a remaster, but still I, I give sony a hard yeah. time often but yeah. one thing i can never fault them on their games are awesome they do make phenomenal games period and that's what xbox is trying to build up a stable of that's why they bought bethesda for 7.5 billion dollars which a bunch of people yeah. are mad at them for you know they have to have an answer to this because it's true you know xbox it, it is, is very weird hitting their for me just releases. generally like we talk about this every week but like mm -hmm. It is very weird for me to be in this position now where I'm like the Sony bashing dude in like articles or on on here or whatever, which is like, it, it's so strange because like the whole last generation, I was, I had very little bad to say about PS4 that I thought was just an incredible system on, on almost every level. And all of its high profile games were either 
my games of the year or my top three every single yeah. year. And like to just have this switched over now, like I don't feel like this is something I, I summoned. This is just like, it's kind of the events as they're unfolding here. And I think their saving grace is still the games. I think they're still producing incredible games. It's just that like so many of their other decisions in regard to the PS5 and then contrasted against what Microsoft changed yeah. from the last generation has created this gulf of, of perception that is is massive and like again this is not affected sales because everything is selling like crazy and there's shortages but that it, it is the complete opposite of the launch of last generation uh for me except that sony has, still has produced a couple like really really solid you know game of the year contenders so mm-hmm. there's they're not lost a touch there it's just this string of decisions like just keeps getting weirder and worse as time goes on and i i don't understand why this keeps happening console ui is weird the the ps4 ps5 both installing on your ps5 is weird not having saved transfer processes like these are the and the ten dollars for more copying patches still exists after a full generation i was i i was a hundred percent sure that wouldn't happen anymore yeah and yet (laughs) and then the the ten dollar additional pricing model meanwhile at xbox all your games are upgraded for free they have smart deliveries free always playing the best version of your games they have game pass they finally got rid of their stupid free to play you have to have xbox live thing you know um they just made a lot of positive changes and they've been receptive to feedback when people are like there was a rumor or potentially they were going to increase increase the price of xbox live everybody reacted just like gamers reacted today about the horizon news and xbox said yeah that's dumb we won't do it they changed their mind like six hours or something yeah (laughs) and i hope sony gets there i i think sony will eventually get things together they have to address those issues right with the ui with the save transfers with the upgrade pass they need if it's ten dollars make it ten dollars but make it the make the process whatever you want it to be and stick with that messaging I, I feel like we still got a couple more years of this, though, because they're gonna they're gonna keep releasing stuff cross gen. I think for as long as they can, because they have 115 have million PS5s. Yeah. Like, you know, this is why we run into like, you know, even third parties ran into this problem. Cyberpunk probably shouldn't have never been developed for last gen consoles, and yet they weren't gonna turn down 170 million Xboxes and PS4s from last generation. Yeah, but that got them into a mess. But yeah. they still sold 15 million copies of the game, so it worked. <laughs> yeah, I believe the so, PlayStation Four is like a hundred million units, and Xbox is something like six. I think it's one. I think it's one sixteen. One Xbox, we still only have. Yeah, I, I looked it up like yesterday. So Xbox is much um, lower, but still, it brings the total like half, install think, yeah. base to like let's say one seventy five, like you said, one hundred seventy five yeah. million. And people are like, "Why are they launching on both both generations?" Are you really one hundred seventy five million? If the, if the Horizon people? thing is somehow a technical problem. Because like I remember everyone being surprised that Horizon Forbidden West was launching on PS4 at all, and like I, I I'm trying to figure out like this is the only potential solution. Like I can't logic out why this would be the case, but like maybe it's not just like some sort of simple uh, upgrade or something. And yet it's like the fact that they're calling this like dual entitlement. <laughs> it, it really shouldn't be complicated. Like you should just have access to both games and like. If you have to download two separate, entirely disparate copies, you know, maybe that's you know something you can do. But I, I just I cannot think of a reason that they would they would do it this way. It just I, it doesn't make sense to me. Has to be an oversight. Like there's no to me, I look at this and I'm just like, there's no way they don't fix this. It's like I I yeah. would think they will and but I, I don't know. Maybe they're just hoping the next storm blows over and we forget about it. I wouldn't be surprised if they they post something tonight. Like I wouldn't be know. surprised. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give it like 24 hours. If they don't within 24 hours, I'd be a little surprised. Honestly. What time is it in Japan? <laughs> <laughs> it I is assume currently... this is not Gorilla's call. Gorilla must be yeah. freaking flipping out about this. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you remember when uh, House Mark said we had no idea how much Returnal was gonna cost. And then it's just, yeah. oh, it's seventy dollars. Okay, I guess whatever. That seems kind of nuts, but it's ten fifty three. That doesn't, that doesn't seem like a good way to run your studios. I mean, I don't maybe that's industry standard, but that seems very weird to me. Ten fifty three AM in Japan on a Friday. If they're going to address it, I bet they address it. Oh yeah, good point about tonight. Yeah, yeah it could be Japan time, but yeah. So the, well, some big board big board meeting happening right now with a bunch of uh, important important dudes. Yeah, it, it feels like this is something that would have to be figured out. 
by a larger group than just America. And, you know? and the only answer really is a free upgrade yeah. because they said it would be mm-hmm. like, although thinking about it, they, they said Miles Morales in there, but like, was, was that a free upgrade in the end? I'll be honest. I have no idea. I don't, I don't know either. Yeah, yeah. Th- that's something I'm thinking about. I, I might have looked that up, but because uh, I yeah, I remember all the upgrade costs about this, but like some included the base Spider-Man game, and it, it got a little confusing. So I just I don't know if you if you just bought Miles on PS4 and then just bought it on PS5, if you could just switch over, but maybe not. Maybe they yeah. they didn't do that in the end either. Um, there was one weird thing that we could talk about more, but I was going to wrap it up. Otherwise, the only other thing I saw that was very bizarre was. Well, Xbox would do it too if they were the market leader was largely the consensus that I thought. Why do you think there's this constant need for deflection? You're asking me to psychoanalyze uh, yeah. console like, or defenders? I, 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 don't, I don't understand it. Like, clearly this is bad for Sony. Sony shouldn't do this. They promised they wouldn't. They promised it would be free. And then people are like, what about? And that's, well, I, that's constantly happening. I think you can make that argument sometimes because this was always the the obvious defense of like why Sony doesn't like crossplay. Like they could say whatever they want about network security and whatever, but like they wanted you to make your friends buy a PlayStation. That's why they didn't want crossplay, and they could do that because of their position as a market leader. Mm-hmm. Something like this, I don't really understand the because they're a market leader argument. Like it just, I don't really get the logic of that. In, in regards to like, like maybe if it also Xbox sort of, Game Pass didn't exist or something, but like it just it doesn't really that doesn't make sense in this context. It also sort of admits that it's bad. Like, well, if Xbox was doing it, I would have been mad too. But Sony's doing right. it, so what about that? <laughs> yeah, and, I and like, like what? <laughs> I, I've always been, you know, at yeah. least somewhat skeptical of Microsoft's ultra benevolent, like for the you know. We're doing everything because we want the broadest spectrum of everyone playing Xbox games wherever they can. And like, blah, blah, blah. We're all friends and there's no console wars. And like, I don't buy that 100%. I think that is a marketing tactic to a degree. And I do think that there would be some significant differences if sales were flipped and Microsoft had just sold 120 million units and Sony had 50 million or whatever, Hmm. Uh, you know, to an extent, not to say everything would change, but like, I don't think something like this. Yeah. It's it's not defensible with, with, when either party would do it at all. <laughs> this is an infrastructure problem with the, the brand, with PlayStation, how they've handled the PlayStation 4 to the PlayStation 5 generation. So the idea that Xbox would do it too if they were the industry leader, I'm like, well, they, but they wouldn't. Like, let's assume they did everything else the same, but they were selling more consoles. So we still have Game Pass. We still have Smart Delivery. Smart Delivery has already fixed the problem. Yeah. You know, so... I mean, it's just it's just very much a straw man sort of instance. Uh, if anybody has a better example, <laughs> maybe maybe we can but talk about that. Don't invite more def- more defenses. Yeah, I, I cannot think of a viable defense for this other than we're hoping we get more money this way. Like that is that is it. I don't I don't know what other answer there is here. <laughs> and I'm glad to see PlayStation blogs calling them out. You know, PlayStation fans are saying this isn't right. You said it would be free. Fix it. And I think they will. Anyway, yeah. thanks, Paul. Uh, any final thoughts or do you want to do the, the outro? Um, Sony, get your S together. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it clean for the kids. Chance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Sony, you got a, you got a lot of great games. You need to fix a few of the other, other side items, let's call them. Like, you know, yeah. an easy upgrade path from PS4 to PlayStation. Give me my Sushi Basei file back. I know you have it. It's in the cloud somewhere. (laughs) All right. Outro time. Paul, I normally do these myself, but I figured we'd just do them together. Where can people find your stuff? I'm at Paul Tassi on Twitter, Paul Tassi on YouTube, and you can Google me for all my Forbes articles. And you know me, you're probably watching this on my channel. So hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to know when notifications go live. I do have memberships. Paul, did you turn on memberships yet for your, your thing? No, but you I don't merch. really know what to offer for them. I do have merch. <laughs> but yeah. Nice. I'll get there. Yeah. Nice. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll catch you for the next one. Bye for now. See ya.